A researcher at Utah State University is helping track disease-carrying mosquitoes in a new way by using satellite photos. This is interesting. She says combining that with data collected on the ground, they can predict where the pests will go. Northern Utah Specialist Mike Anderson explains how this works. Yeah, guys, you know, uh, you might expect this work to take place out of the March, marshy wetlands, and some of it does, but a lot of the data that helps these researchers figure out where these disease-carrying mosquitoes might go next comes from up there. It won't be long before the mosquitoes start hatching. They are always annoying, but some are worse than others. For this paper, we were looking at Aedes aegypti. That one can bring with it a lot of dangerous and widespread diseases. Like dengue, yellow fever, Zika, chikungunya. It's why Nora Sarman is taking a close look at their migration patterns. Along with researchers at UC Davis and Yale, the work does start on the ground collecting the bugs then mapping genetic data. Sarman says it's kind of like family trees for mosquitoes. And if we know where the, the ancestry is tracking across the landscape, we can much more efficiently plan exactly where we do those releases. She's, of course, talking about the treatments that could better control their populations, protecting humans from disease. The last piece that helps them determine where they're heading comes here. So these black dots are where we collected mosquitoes. Satellite maps, mostly from NASA, that share data like rainfall, habitats, and the impacts of humans on the landscape. Unfortunately, that's how a lot of the pests migrate, by traveling with us up and down the highways. We're really excited because the method was so successful, like we got such a good measure of predictability. About an 83% accuracy rate so far. As of now, the Aedes aegypti has not made its way into Utah, but it is nearing the southern border. And Sarman says that this method could be used to track other mosquito populations as well. And so far, the Aedes aegypti, uh, Utah has been too cold for it, but Sarman says with uh, adaptation and climate change, that could change. Of course, she says this research, too, could help to stop that. Back to you. Mike, thank you.